I haven't played in a while, let's go buy back those seismics I sold a few years ago. I mean, by now there should be way higher tier weapons, and therefore seismics are going to be much cheaper than what I sold them for, right? <laughs> Whether you've come back from a long break, been scammed, or sold all your RSGP to your high school friend, in this video I shall teach you how to rebuild your bank, or in other words, Nick Mana. So whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Let's kick it off with the noob money-making methods. You see this monkey? Yes. That's you. We're going to be picking bananas with a basket in Karamja to feed our inner banana addiction. Which apparently not many players on RuneScape share because these things do not sell at all. On a more serious note, we're going to be collecting something for money making that is not vegan. At least I think so. According to veganfriendly.org.uk, some bananas are indeed not suitable for vegans. We're going to be annihilating Gilanor's entire chicken population instead, because chicken is actually a valuable commodity in this game. And by far one of the easiest money makers in this game to get started or to rebuild. You literally whack these chickens like they're flies, pick up the chicken meat and feathers, bank, repeat, and make over 1 million GP per hour. That is, until the chicks discover modern weapons to fight back and avenge their parents. If being part of the food industry isn't entirely your thing, you can also turn to merchants, aka shops in RuneScape, selling runes instead. You buy out their rune stock and sell those on the Grand Exchange for big profits. Just be sure that you're buying the runes at a profit as prices can change over time. You can also return to the food supply chain yet again by buying meat from meat shops in RuneScape and selling that on the Grand Exchange too. Both of these types of shop runs only require a tiny amount of upfront money for big returns on investment at least when you're starting out or returning to the game. Now maybe you're not a businessman at all, maybe you want to do something a little more peaceful and you have steady hands. As you see now, you can hold it for a second please. There's a good chance you might enjoy making some starting cash from the archaeology skill which has a few money makers, one of which I'll cover at a high level section in this video. Now while you can farm logs for Kronert, you'll likely be making more money by disassembling tier 1 artifacts for components. More specifically classic and historic components as they'll be the most profitable for your account. You basically craft them into a component crate with invention, requiring level 20 invention, and then sell them on the Grand Exchange. Easy. There is one problem though, and that's that this method requires level 20 invention, which new accounts obviously will not have access to. This method will net you only 700k GP per hour with all costs taken into account at the low end and maybe 2 to 3.5 million GP at the higher levels. Is that good? Probably not, but it's worth mentioning as it's pretty AFK and it might just be better money in the future. The next method is creating divine locations, which can be a profit or a loss, but generally are a good idea to do anyway for the same amount of experience they provide in a short amount of time every single day. If you use the wiki link in the description below, you'll be able to see how much money each location or how much experience each location gives you and what level it requires. Be cautious though as sometimes the grand exchange prices aren't accurate and you'll be making more or less money per divine location. Now I know this is the noob section, but if you are a high level player watching this video and you have Elf City Unlocked and level 95 Dungeoneering, you can get free divine locations of any type, you just have to hop worlds until you find the one you want or need in the Garage or Resource Dungeon. Another great way of making money if you just came back to the game is claiming your quest caravan magical dice if you haven't already. Simply head to the Varrock Lodestone, talk to May, the NPC, not the month on the calendar hanging in your bathroom, and roll those dice you deserve from completing those quests. These will give you random clue score rewards and are pretty pog money. Now, you can, of course, actually do clue scrolls, which is pretty good money, but, uh... Well, I can't tell you how to do them because I didn't become a member to play puzzles with extra steps. Another fantastic way to earn a serious amount of starter cash with not much more than a simple weapon and note paper is killing spell wisps or pyre fiends. The latter requiring 30 slayer to kill. These creatures drop impious ashes which sell for a good amount of money each and you can easily collect over a thousand in an hour using note paper without needing high combat stats or weapons at all. This is one of the easiest early game money makers that can make you up to 7 million GP per hour. If you have slightly higher combat stats, you're able to collect the Cursed Ashes in case Impious Ashes crash, or they're no longer valuable when you're watching this video, which I highly doubt. You can also collect the Cursed Ashes by killing lesser demons. 
Yeah, it's really not that exciting. Let's uh, let's stop the music right there. If you have level 50 runecrafting, by far one of the best money makers for time invested is creating Vizvax using the Rune Goldberg machine. This is a daily you can do which only takes 30 to 60 seconds where you go to the rune crafting guild at the top of the wizard's tower, you use the rune goldberg machine, you use the correct combination of runes using cheap runes only, and you make a bunch of whizwax and boom, 1.5 to 2 million GP profit right there. Another great way of making money from archaeology is farming material caches for certain materials and then selling those on the Grand Exchange. The ones that are currently the best profit per material and probably will be that way for a long long time because they're used for binding contracts, another great money making method, are the Hellfire Metal requiring level 36 archaeology and Blood of Orcus requiring level 58 archaeology. The best place to farm Hellfire Metal is in God Wars Dungeon 1 in Zamrax Encampment, also known as Zamrax Fortress, as you have five different spots three of which are located right next to each other. Blood of Orcus is best farmed at the top of the Slayer Tower in Canafis. It's worth noting that Jagex didn't learn anything from the amazing mining and smithery work and decided that material caches should be competitive just like ores used to be pre-mining rework. This means the amount of materials you gain per hour can be severely impacted by the amount of players doing this method because other players can quite literally crash you and, well, I wouldn't call it stealing, but share your spot with you. Now, as long as you don't encounter anyone at Hellfire Meta, with that world hopping, you'll be able to get near 700 materials per hour. At the Blood of Orca spot, you'll be able to get around 450 with that world hopping because there's far fewer spawns, but in between those spawns, you can collect Ancient Vis instead, or you can start world hopping, it's up to you. As of recording this video, both of these methods are easily over 5 million GP per hour. As of right now, hunting Whirligigs using the Crocodile Hunting method at Hatsaway Places located nearby the Alcrid Lodestone is actually fantastic money, as long as you're doing the level 30 hunter or above Whirler Gigs. This is because the Whirler Gigs are used to create certain powders which are used by players, and currently these are selling way over the GE price. Again, the GE price sometimes simply is wrong because the actual market value of an item can be much higher or lower. If you're doing these for money, you can simply click the Whirler Gigs one by one and wait for them to come back to the beach, then click again. But if you want experience, be sure to click until you have three stacks on the other Whirler Gigs far away from you because you'll get more experience. Also, don't forget that you can actually get upgrades, including automatic looting after having caught a certain amount of Scarabs or Whirler Gigs. Why are you running? If you ever thought about training runecrafting, now is a fantastic time to be making money with the runecrafting skill or training the skill in general as runes have gone up due to new spells and new weapons like the Fractal Staff of Armadil. And the best thing about this method is that you barely need anything to get started. No expensive gear, just really basic things like room pouches, which is great for rebuilding your bank. I'll leave a full video covering this method in the description below. Doing low tier big game hunter, requiring level 75 hunter and 55 slayer, given that you persist when doing the dinosaurs, can be good money as well. The only issue with this method is that if you do not persist, the amount of money you make seriously drops. The same can be said if you don't have the upgraded Hunter Lodge and Bait Box as they make killing these dinosaurs far more efficient. The majority of your money will be made from the rare drops including the unchecked player and farm animal drops which are 1 in 65 and the Dragon Matok which is a 1 in 101 rare drop. The reason I'm mentioning Big Game Hunter is because it can be a fun training method or money making method especially if you like eradicating dinosaurs that should already be extinct. Where animals live and thrive and they work, there's an endangered species right there. Ah, and so we have arrived at the higher level methods. Well, to be entirely honest, you could literally do anything for money at this point, and the amount of methods, given that you have base 90 stats and most of the quests done in this game, are endless. The question is, what do you want to be doing, and do you care if you only make 5 more an hour AFK and 10 more an hour actively? You could do a bunch of things. For example, AFK farming Elder Toros tier 3 isn't really good money, but it's AFK. Doing agility at Anachronia is boring, but you can make a bunch of money if you end up making a double surge codex which takes like seven or eight hours and you know money makers come and go but the one thing that will always be worth doing is buying bonds thank you for watching 
Now, but seriously, the main way of making money and actually growing your bank is by far PVM. PVM simply is the best and there's no question about it. Although some bosses are far better than others. If you're new to bossing, maybe start and focus on learning Nex and Araxor, as these are two great money makers and very enjoyable bosses as well. If you're a little bit more experienced, you could go ahead and try some of the Elite Dungeons, but more specifically Elite Dungeon 1, because it's by far the best for money making consistently. And it's just going to be far more rewarding to learn than something like Elite Dungeon 3, where you could go dry on ECB pieces, and it just doesn't feel very nice. Tuzkal Zuck is another great pick, being 10 mil GP per kill in normal mode, and 40 million GP per kill on average in hard mode, although that's very challenging. It's something I haven't done myself yet, but I have done normal mode, and normal mode is really good money if you stick to it as well. And of course, Croesus is another great pick from God of Dungeon 3. This is a skilling boss. I don't think it has a very high barrier to entry. It's quite simple to learn. And on average, it's 2 million GP per kill. The only thing that can be hard is finding a group of three other players that want to do the boss with you. Now, let's say you've come back into the game. You do have high level stats. You have maybe your overloads left from four years ago, five years ago but you don't have any money for gear. Well, in that case, you're going to need to buy some cheap gear. There's definitely some cheap gear on the Grand Exchange. And then do something like God Wars Dungeon 2, you know, Vindicta, Hellweir. Uh, maybe do some Slayer tasks, because Slayer can be good money if you focus on the right tasks. For example, Moss Golems. If that isn't your thing, you could focus on farming binding contracts, a video which I'll leave a link to in the description below if you want more context. Doesn't have high requirements, just level 68 archaeology and the Dagon by Mystery. You could use the player and farm to get a certain breeding pair to farm them for money. For example, Rexes requiring level 106 farming and above. You simply grab a breeding pair, either by buying it from players or from the gun exchange. Put them in the breeding pen, grow them, put the eggs in another pen, grow them, gather the produce, sell them for beans, and simply repeat without needing to buy new Rexes because you're breeding them yourself. You can do the same with the yaks, although the female yaks are the only ones that give you yak milk. You can sell this, this is used for super rune crafting potions I believe, and it's just really good passive money, you just need a breeding pair, keep them healthy, keep them breeding, and then, you know, basically put the babies in another pen, grow them, the females that is, gather the produce, sell them for beans, and repeat. With that being said, we've come to the end of this video. I hope this video gave you some ideas on how to start rebuilding your bank in three very different tiers, and if it did, be sure to drop a like down below and perhaps consider subscribing. Thank you to the channel members for supporting the channel, and if you too would like to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.